All right, we are back again. It's Mr. Well All Right. Well All Right. Uh, if this mic could talk one half of the infamous podcast, um, I am Mr. Well All Right, a.k.a. the designated caster, a.k.a. the alien in the room, a.k.a. a mic is only a mic until I speak on it. Uh, over here to my left, I have the wonderful Kai Smith. How are you doing this afternoon, ma'am? Very good, thank you. Or evening, actually. I'm sorry. No, it's, a little, it's a little later in the evening. But uh, welcome to the, you know, here at this wonderful um, event, T'Challa. Um, it's my first year out here. I was, I was gracefully asked... Um, Kind of recruited by the owners of the of the the wonderful event we're at today to come out here and do my podcast out here and interview some of the teachers of the year. Nice. So you are her international teacher of the year. Yes. Wow! Please tell us about that wonderful um, accomplishment for sure. Sure. Um, this is my ninth year teaching abroad. I've taught in Shenzhen, China, uh, oh. Suzhou, China, for eight years. I uh, did a year in um, Antwerp, Belgium, and I am in the process of moving to. Um, Hanoi, Vietnam for the next two years. Wow. Um, first question I got to ask you. Well, first of all, let me give some hand claps for that for sure. That's amazing um, for sure that you have, um, you know, went abroad, going to other countries, other cultures to, you know, extend and, uh, you know, just give out your, your education or I guess your knowledge to help people be educated for sure. Um, I got to ask you, what's the hardest challenge about doing that? Um, I think some of the hardest challenges just uh, working with students of different um, backgrounds, helping them understand because there are uh, very few brown people in right. the in the areas that I have chosen to teach so far. So um, sometimes it can be challenging when students just um, are fascinated, you know, by just the differences. So for me, it's been it's been good and a, a teaching moment. Lots of times, just learning um, about their culture and teaching them vice versa about my culture and about me and the differences um, in how I look, how my hair looks, all of those things. Um, I think they're happy challenges. Wow. I want to ask you: um, Is it is it is it just you by yourself that goes, or you have like a like family? I don't personally have family. Okay. No. I'm looking for a man, husband. I got you. Come on now. Get, come on in. <laughs> Claim is speaking now. Vietnam. Here she comes. <laughs> no, but it is just me by myself. So, but what ends up happening is you build a camaraderie with the other teachers that come in at the same cohort as you. Um, so you end up having a, a pseudo family. Right. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah. And so it's teachers from, I guess, across this country that go to, this, go to the other countries. Across the world. There are oh, teachers wow. that are coming from literally everywhere, everywhere. in the okay. world. So, man, that's that's that's. I will say, wow, because I, I, I know I, I'm an educator myself. Like, it would be hard to do that, um, especially like, like now you said you're finna make a two year commitment to Vietnam. Like, that's amazing, super amazing, super, super dope. Uh, I want to ask you so, you know, I, there's a, you know, you're dealing with parents all the time with, you know, the, the students you educate. Um, there's a very famous statement that's being said a lot in education, and that is that a lot of parents in today's generation uh, see themselves as more of the children's friend as opposed to the parent. Um, what is your response in, uh, to that statement, and like, how do you do you think it should change? Um, I think that we that our children should know that their parents are their friends and their biggest advocates. Um, I find for the areas of, that I've chosen to teach in for the longest periods of time, um, parents are very, very, very busy, and we have what's called IEs, which are like aunties, um, okay. so the housekeepers and things like that. Where I found a lot of, of the students I worked with more have that that role with the auntie with the IE is the person that picks them up from school that makes their food that you know all of the helps them with the homework right. while parents are super busy running their businesses and things like that so it's a little bit different than what you find in the American home right. um, I do believe that anywhere you are that you should be a friend to your child mm -hmm. um, but there should also be that that authority line, parent, right, right. yeah parent. for sure for sure um Definitely. I mean, having a child myself, my daughter's going to 10th grade this year. Wow. Um, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> pray my strength. But no, I just, um, I, I do always try to kind of battle with that myself. Again, as an educator, like, you know, a lot, I teach middle school. I'm teaching eighth okay. grade this year. So a lot of these parents, it's, sometimes it's hard to even give them, like, correctives about their children or, um, you know, needs, you know, areas of improvement because they just feel, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like talking to the bigger version of the student that I already have. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't know how to break that fine line, for sure. I think that, um, so the first school that I worked with um, in Shenzhen, China, we had what was called Parent University, okay. um, where parents came in, I think it was twice a month, or sometimes it would be once a month, but we're educating parents on how we're teaching your kids, the reasons, because, you know, in these Asian countries that I've worked in, it's, you know, lots of rote memorization. It's like, how many words does my you know, first grader know? 
Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I'm right. not trying to teach them a certain number of words. I'm trying to teach them spelling patterns so that they can spell all the words that follow these patterns. Right, right, right. So getting them to understand why we're teaching them the way we're teaching them and how to help them at home, I think helps parents get on board because they have, first of all, they understand. They, you know, when you come home and they're doing something different and you don't have a list of words or a list of something for them, that is jarring for, um, for Chinese parents specifically but um, helping them understand how and why we're teaching your child and how they can continue that teaching at home is key for them to get on your side. For sure. Uh, I want to play a game with you. I call it the one word game. Uh, the way this one word game works is I'm going to name a random celebrity and you will give me one word that you associate, correlate, identify to this celebrity and I'll do the same thing. These are all celebrities on the fly, top of my head. So I'll name them and then you'll give me your word. Um, first celebrity, Steve Harvey. Inspirational. Inspirational. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say utility because I can't say utility belt. So I'm going to say utility because I feel like he's so many different talents, gifts. You know Dropping what I'm saying? Dimes. Definitely for sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Uh, next celebrity, I'm going to say, um, let me see, Samuel L. Jackson. Hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say OG. I feel like he's like the OG man that a lot of men and boys you know in today's society could benefit from having somebody like him in their in their life for sure um for sure next one i'm gonna see here uh let me go with um lebron james hmm. Goat. Go <laughs> <sighs> okay that's cool that's cool um i'm gonna say clean the reason why i say clean is because um lebron james is probably the first black male athletes in a very very long time that we haven't had any off the court issues scandals nothing nothing big in public where it was like uh you know what i'm saying a hit to his character he just he's been able to keep a pretty clean profile for the most part 20 years in the nba um coming straight out of high school you would almost expect him to you know be a boy and somehow have to learn how to become a man he just kind of came in with a very mature mindset from day one so i'm gonna say clean um, next celebrity here. Uh, she said go. That's crazy. Uh, next one. I'm gonna say, cool. Michael Jordan. I'm gonna say old school. Old school. Oh, that's two words. Button. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's okay. It's a button we push here when people do the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? I got you. So you said old school. But what's what's one word? Is it old. Uh, I don't want to call it old. Um, let's say original. Original. I'm going to say for Michael Jordan, I'm going to say opportunity. The reason why I'm going to say that is because uh, I watched the movie Air, um, and it tells the story of how he ended up going to Nike when he originally wanted to go sign with Adidas. And um, his, his, his first initial plan was to go with Adidas, and then if not them, go to Converse. He didn't want to, he didn't want to be affiliated with Nike at all. And so Nike convinced him to come in there for a visit, um, and his mom you know, called the, uh, the guy at Nike and said, hey, listen, Michael has decided to join Nike under one condition that you also allow him to receive um, compensation for every shoe that's sold with his name attached. And so um, the owner of Nike um, said, sure, what's it gonna be, you know, 10, 12 million? That first year, that shoe sold 172 million pairs. Um, and Michael Jordan received a, a piece of every shoe. So that was legendary. Um, it was, it was opportuni opportuni opportunistic for him to receive this um, pay. And now he's a billionaire based on just moves he made at, you know, 21 coming into the league, so. That's awesome. Uh, I didn't know that about him. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to say opportunity. Um, next uh, next uh, celebrity here, I'm going to say, uh, let me see, Martha Stewart. Versatile. Versatile. I'm going to say at this point in her life, I'm going to say cookout. I feel like she could definitely come to the cookout for sure. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Get you some baked beans, Martha, some ribs. We got potato salad over here uh, for sure. Um, next one here, let me see. Next celebrity here, let me see, Beyonce. Iconic. Iconic. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, uh, performer. She's, she's the definition of performer. Uh, in the same umbrella, Jay-Z. Hmm. No, I got a lot of love for Jay-Z. Um, let's see. I don't really know what to, what one word would describe him. Um, lyricist. Good one. I like that. I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna say business. He is definitively business. You know what I'm saying? Like he even says himself, like 
I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. So um, for sure, Jeff and Jeff, uh, business for him. A uh, couple more. I'm going to say um, black women teachers. I should have saved GOAT for us. But um, <laughs> let's see. Um, necessary. That's, oh, that's a great word. Necessary. Um, okay, for me, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say glue. I think y'all are what holds the campus together. Um, I think that y'all love different. Mm. Y'all embrace different, and you're able to touch people from different ethnicities. Um, very, very natural uh, nurturers, and so I think that's the glue of a campus. Um, two more. Black male teachers. I think also necessary. Necessary? Yeah. I'm going to say for them, I'm going to say, I'm going to say tough. Um, as one, as one, I'm going to say um, it's definitely tough, especially if you're somebody who is, like, for example, deemed attractive. It's hard to even be friendly with women in a, in a woman-dominated field. Um, it's tough to be friendly. It's tough to be tough on the children because they think yeah. you're do, doing too much. Like it's, this is a lot of like eggshells sometimes, but just having to like find your way, almost like okay. a treasure map in August, and like hope that you get to the treasure chest in May. And so okay. that's why I would say tough. Um, last one, Kiki Palmer. Beauty. Beauty. I'm gonna say. Uh, mm, I'm gonna say prayer. I'm gonna just pray for. Uh, I'm saying her situation, her family. I'm gonna just say prayer for show. Sure. Okay. For show, sure, for show. Sure. Um, if I if I ask you, uh, you know, Miss Kai, to give the you know, it is August is approaching here very quickly, um, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but um, if you were going to give you new know, educators all around the world um, some some words of vi- wisdom, some words of advice um, before they start on this journey for the next school year, what would be your w- words of wisdom? Um, words of wisdom to educators coming in, especially if this is your first endeavor into the classroom I say just be open um, be ready to learn as much as you are ready to teach okay. um, and take every student for where they are mm. I, I've, I've worked with teachers in, in a coaching capacity where it's like you know okay we teach you know DP or we teach you know this level so if they're not there you know they just need to be there this is what I teach Take your children, figure out where they are, figure out what motivates them, Mm. and do your best to move everyone up. Um, You know, it... I wish that we had four or five teachers in the classroom because you're going to have six or seven different levels. Figure out where those kids are and how you can... What's the next step for each one of them? Because you're not going to pull everyone to the same finish line well, they are going to go to, to the same finish line, but they're not all going to get there at the same time or at using the same methods. Mm. Figure out what that method is for that kid. Um, that's crucial. You know, I've been a special ed teacher my whole career, and I think that that is crucial, figuring out where they are and how to get them, what is it going to take for me to do to get them to where they need to be. For sure. I'm going to definitely use those words of wisdom for myself again. I'm actually teaching a new grade this year. I've been doing six. I'm doing eighth grade next this year coming up. So um, definitely going to use, uh, I don't look at it as a, as a challenge for me. I think it'll be just honestly very easy for me personally. Um, you know what I'm saying? But I, I definitely going to use those words just to kind of, you know, help, like I said, guide myself and just have, a, you know, just more success and just a better overall energy um, about myself during this upcoming school year for sure. Um, I definitely want to say I pray for you for showing your journeys to Thank Vietnam. You. I definitely hope and i'm sure i will hear more and wonderful great things about you um over this time i'm glad our, i'm glad our paths crossed for sure yeah. um but yeah i thank you again for just your time i know we can't borrow time but for you to be here in this hot park <laughs> sitting here at my table it's all worth it yeah i definitely appreciate you very much so kai smith y'all for sure thank you thank you no problem